What's up guys, my name is Ace, and with the Blackout Beta finally here, I've already got a lot of people asking me for tips, they're wondering how to improve, they're just hopping into this for the first time, and you might be struggling a little bit, or you might be just looking for areas to improve. So, in today's video, I'm going to be sharing a ton of great beginner tips to help you guys get into this Blackout mode and be more successful. Some of these are going to be general Battle Royale tips for those people that aren't really into Battle Royale games, some of them will be quick one-off tips, and other ones I'm going to go a little bit more into detail with, so you really understand understand that aspect of the game. As for the gameplay in the background, I'm going to throw out my very first solo win. Keep in mind this was really early on in my playtime yesterday, so you might not see me implementing a lot of the tips I'm talking about today, and that's simply because at this point I was brand new to the mode and I didn't understand a lot of the complexities to it. So the first thing we're going to be talking about is dropping into the map. This is an area that can get you a huge leg up at the beginning of the game. You don't want to be the one that's landing last after somebody's already on the ground and has a gun. You want to try and get there first or at least at the same time as the other people. And this dropping mechanic does perform different than a game like Fortnite for instance. The biggest key to this, if you're trying to travel any sort of a distance and you're not just dropping right along the line of the helicopters, Instead of just taking a flat trajectory with your wingsuit and trying to float all the way over to that spot and then dropping down, it's actually much more effective if you initially drop straight down, even if you're going all the way across the map, if you initially drop looking straight down so you gain that initial speed, Vondahar states this speed as 60 meters per second, so you can keep an eye on your speed meter there if you want, or basically it's the point where your arms fold in, once you reach that point, then level off and go horizontal and you will shoot across the map super, super quickly because you maintain that velocity and you just transfer it so you're going forward with that velocity. This is very different from Fortnite because in Fortnite you would just normally drop if you want to go all the way across the map and you kind of float across and then you just drop down. It doesn't work that way in this game and this gives you a massive leg up over people. I've actually found myself several times using this where I can get a gun and then I can just look up to the sky and I see people in parachutes and I can shoot at them or wait till they land and then shoot them. So practice this a little bit, even if you're going all the way across the map, get that initial momentum, transfer it into your horizontal velocity, you'll get much further and you'll land much sooner. Another thing that's really important for dropping in and the second tip I have for you today is you want to minimize the amount of time that you're in your parachute. You want to go from wingsuit to being on the ground as fast as possible because when you're in your parachute, you're kind of a sitting duck, you don't have a whole lot of control over your character, and you fall very slowly to the ground. This is a tip that applies to a lot of Battle Royale games, and what you want to do is you want to try and open your parachute over the lowest possible point. This is usually the water if possible. So if you're landing in an area that has water nearby, you want to make sure you're wingsuiting to the point where your body is directly over the water when you're opening your chute, and then you glide into the spot. Now the reason for this is you actually open your chute based on your altitude above the ground at that current point. So if you're above a mountain, you're going to be opening your chute above that mountain, and then if you're gliding down the mountain, you're going to be in your parachute for a very, very long time. Whereas if you open it above water, that's the lowest point on the map, and that will allow you to glide into your landing spot a lot faster. This one takes a little bit of practice, especially with the parachute because you don't have a ton of control, but practice this and always be aware of what's below you as you get to that point where you're going to be opening your parachute. One more general tip that I have as far as dropping in goes is deciding where you want to land. This one might be painfully obvious for people that have played a lot of Battle Royale in the past, but for those people that are new to Battle Royale games, the hot zones at the beginning of a game tend to be first off in the middle of the map, so firing range, the farms, as well as river town, those are really hot zones, but also any other area that is directly surrounding the path that the helicopters take at the beginning. So when you're in the staging area, open up your map, you can see the path that the helicopters are going to take. Any area, especially named locations that are along that path, those are likely to be hot zones at the beginning of the game. So you might find situations where you can't find a gun and you're in a big rush and you get killed like immediately. Whereas the areas that are far away from that path, these tend to be the more cold zones at the beginning of the match. So if you stretch it out further, you're less likely to run into people immediately and you're much more likely to have plenty of time to get your loot and get ready to get in the fight. Now that's how you locate that. For the next tip, where should you be landing? Should you land in a hot zone or a cold zone? Which is best? Really, to me, this really depends on your goal for that match. Are you trying to practice? Are you trying to improve your skills and get better without worrying too much about trying to get a win? land in the hot zones. It's excellent for practicing and making you a better player overall. Whereas if your main goal is simply to win or get the best placement possible, you're better off landing in a cold zone and taking your time, getting your loot, 
and then making your push in towards the zone and getting into the fight. Now personally, I highly recommend mixing it up. Land hot sometimes to warm up, to practice, to really work on your gunfight skills. And other times, go for placement, land cold, and get yourself looted up to the max, and then get into the fight over time. Mixing it up and doing both of these will end up making you a more versatile player, in my opinion. Kind of leaning off of this for the next tip that I have for you guys, and this is one of the biggest and best tips I can give for you to improve over time at this game, is take fights. Don't be afraid to take fights, and this can happen at any point in the match as well. If you hear some gunfire and you've got at least half decent loot, Get yourself into that fight. Now do it in a smart way, I'm not saying just run into that situation like a chicken with your head cut off, because oftentimes other people will be approaching that fight too. So approach it in a smart manner, but approach the fight. I see far too many beginners that hear gunfire and they panic and they're terrified and then they just kind of turtle down into a building and hope that it passes over them. This doesn't make you a better player. This might get you better positioning more consistently in the game, but it's not going to make you a better player, and even if you are getting into a lot of top 10 or top 5 situations with almost no kills, eventually you're going to have to take a fight when that circle gets really small. And do you want to be somebody that's terrified of the fight, or do you want to be somebody that's confident going into that fight? In the long run, it's much better to be confident. So take any reasonable fight you possibly can, but do it in a smart way. Sometimes the situation is just not in your favor and you have to avoid a fight, and there's nothing wrong with that. But if you hear gunfire, at least go and scope out the situation and see if it's something you want to get into. Next up, I want to start getting through some faster ones. We've talked about those ones in a lot of detail. A quick one off, if you're moving from cover to cover and you're out in the open, you don't have much cover and you expect somebody might be eyeballing you, which you should kind of always expect if you're out in the open, mix it up a little bit. Don't just sprint in a straight line because there are some snipers that are pretty good at leading their shots and hitting that first shot. So what I like to do if I'm out in the open and I'm moving is I throw a little slide jump in there every now and then. What this means is I just go from a slide and then I jump out of that slide and it just makes you much harder to predict. If there's somebody eyeing you up at a distance with a sniper rifle, they'll probably think twice about even taking that shot at you if you're being really sporadic with your movement. Next up, if you want to wingsuit off of high ground in the middle of a game, this is one that trips a lot of people up, and I'm sure most people have taken a death to this if they've tried doing it for the first time without knowing this tip. If you want to wingsuit off of one of these high positions like the dam or the construction site, keep in mind you do need to be high enough to do this, sprint towards the edge, jump, and hold your jump button as you jump off. Don't just tap the jump button because then you'll just jump off normally and you'll die. And don't try and like double tap it or anything, just jump and hold. This will allow you to open your wingsuit and then you will land safely. Hopefully this tip will at least save a few of you guys before trying that for the first time. Moving on to the next tip, and this is something that I really struggled with for the first couple hours that I played Blackout. Don't forget about your consumables and your equipment. These things will absolutely win you gunfights. Going back and watching some of my initial gameplay, it really like hurts me when I'm in a fight, I've got like a cluster grenade or something, and I'm not using it against a guy when he's clearly within range. The equipment, especially in Blackout, is quite powerful, so don't forget that you have it, and don't forget to use it. Same thing goes with consumables. I still find myself often forgetting to activate my consumables, because I'm thinking, oh, I don't need it now, I'll need it later on, but then there is never a later on where I actually use it. Don't be afraid to just instantly activate a consumable if you pick it up. They do tend to last for a couple minutes at least, and they will often help you in situations. Next up, we have a tip for healing. For a lot of people that have played a lot of other Battle Royale games, I've seen that they just assume that you can't move while you're healing. That's not the case in Blackout. Blackout's very different here. You can heal on the move in Blackout. It looks like it slows you down just slightly while you do this, but you can still keep a very good pace while you're healing. And this allows you to save very valuable seconds as you're healing. Maybe you're running away from an enemy around a corner. You can start healing as you're running away instead of getting around that corner and then starting your heal. And this can save you those valuable seconds that make the difference between winning and losing that gunfight. Next up, footstep sounds. Footstep sounds currently in Blackout. This could change in the future, but on the first day of the beta for Blackout, they are extremely loud. So if you're approaching a situation where you think there might be an enemy there or you know there's an enemy there, and you want to try and sneak up on them, don't just sprint towards them if you can avoid it. Sometimes you just have to push because there might be other people looking at you. But in a lot of situations, what you can do to sneak up on them is simply crouch walk towards them. When you crouch and you're walking, your footsteps are nearly silent in this game. They're not going to hear you until you're right up behind them if they hear you at all. Whereas if you start sprinting towards them, if they have a headset, they'll hear you from a mile away. They'll be able to just pre-aim you and pick you off. 
This brings us to the next tip that I have for you guys, and this might seem obvious to some people, but I'm still seeing people do this all the time. If you're looting a body bag, so after you kill somebody and you're looting them, don't just stand there and loot them. Now on PC, this might end up being different if they have like a tab loot system where you can strafe side to side while you're looting. But at least on console in the current build, you can't really move around a whole lot effectively while you're looting a guy's bag. So you're much better off just going prone and hoping that nobody sees you. I've actually picked off quite a few free kills that I probably wouldn't have even noticed if I didn't see them standing still over a body bag. So always be sure you go prone when you're looting a body bag, at least on the console build. The next tip I have for you guys has to do with the vehicles in this game, and this is something that you'll learn over time eventually. Vehicles are generally only good for moving from point A to point B if you find yourself too far away from the action or way outside of the circle or something. I would strongly recommend that you limit your time within the vehicles. Now this is a little bit different for squads, and the cargo truck can be pretty good in squads for actually attacking objectives and stuff, because it has great cover and a lot of health. But aside from that, you generally don't want to be on a vehicle for too long, because they're very loud, you can hear them from really, really far away, and most of them don't really offer that much protection for you. Next up is a gunfight tip that I have for you guys that's very, very important, and will hopefully allow you to win a lot more gunfights in this game. If it's reasonable, always aim for the head. Now the reason behind this is armor is pretty common in this game. Like beyond the first initial fights, I would say the majority of the players on the map will end up having some form of armor, most likely just level one or two. But if you get into a gunfight with a guy that has armor, if you shoot him in the head, the armor doesn't matter. You can completely melt people. And I've had actually a few frustrating deaths where I was wondering like, how did I just get melted so fast? I have level two armor and I just dropped in like three shots. Headshots ignore armor completely aside from level three, but that's a different story. And that's one of my minor complaints with this game so far. So really think about that and actively aim towards the head in the situations where it makes sense. Obviously, if you're trying to pick somebody off at a really long distance, don't bother trying to hit them in the head. Just try and land as many body shots as possible. But if you're in a relatively close quarter situation, it is worth it to take that extra time and effort to aim towards the head. This brings us to our next tip, which is a very general tip, and it seems obvious to a lot of people, but again, it's something I wanted to point out for people that are maybe brand new to this style of game. Always try and get the high ground, especially when you get into situations where you're like top 10 situation, the circle's getting smaller. You generally want to fight for that high ground position because you will have the advantage in that high ground. Something that goes along with this is you also want to be really aware of the different pieces of cover. If there's a high ground position that has no trees or rocks that you can hide behind and everything else is really open, maybe you don't want to go to the high ground. It's probably not your best bet. I've also seen a lot of beginner players standing out in the open and they see an enemy and they just want to take the shot immediately. Instead of positioning themselves behind cover first and then taking the shot, they just start shooting at them like crazy and then when the enemy returns fire, they don't know what to do and they have no cover to get to. So especially towards the end game, if you get a circle that's out in the open, which often seems to be the case, be very aware of the high ground positions as well as cover. Moving on to the next one, this one applies more so to the urban areas, so not so much if you're out in the forest or anything, but in the urban areas, get creative with your movement, and remember that in this game, you can mantle very, very high. So even if it looks like you can't mantle on something, you often can, and you can use this to your advantage to outplay your enemies. There's been a lot of times where I can find a way to mantle up on top of a rooftop that my enemy doesn't think I can get to, and I can completely take him off guard and take him out there. So get creative, be aware of your surroundings, and look for opportunities to do a cool thing like mantle up onto a rooftop or mantle up into a window that most people would think that you can't mantle into. It will often lead to a lot of great moments and it'll leave your enemies scratching their head. Moving on to the next relatively general tip that will save your life in a lot of situations. Try to avoid tunnel vision. If you find yourself in a fight for a really long period of time and you're really focused on that one enemy and you really want to kill them, always be aware of the fact that if you guys have been firing your gun, there's a good chance other people are going to be coming for that gunfire and somebody might sneak up on you. So don't get that tunnel vision. And if a fight's taking too long and it just doesn't look like it's going anywhere, either push that guy to finish the fight quickly or just let that fight go, back away and get out of there so you don't get shot in the back by somebody else. You can always fight him in a different situation later. So finally, I've got a bunch of small tips when it comes to looting, and these are very important tips that will hopefully help you loot a little bit faster. Keep in mind, I do expect some adjustment to be made to the looting system as time goes on, because it is one of the bigger complaints in the community. But at least in the current build of the game, some of these will still apply later down the road as well. The first tip I have for you guys is if you see a piece of loot that you want that's ahead of you, and you want to pick it up quickly and keep going, 
Make sure you're looking down a little bit in the current build. I think they said they're going to fix that so you can look up further and still pick up the loot. But you can hold square or the pickup button, whatever that is. You can start holding that well before you get to that loot and you can sprint over it. And as long as you look closely enough at it as you're running by, you will pick that up even at a full sprint and you don't even have to slow down. Now this doesn't work so well if it's two items that are really close together. You only pick up the first item and then you'll just keep sprinting beyond the second item. But it's excellent in those situations where you have that one piece of loot that you want that's ahead of you and you want to be looting as fast as possible. Look down slightly, hold square before you approach it, and just sprint right over top of it. You'll end up picking that up. Next up is something that's very simple and a lot of you guys are probably going to be thinking, why didn't I think of that before? When you pick up a gun, there's a little animation you have to complete after you pick that up. As a result, I see a lot of people going for the gun first, and then next to every gun spawn, there's some ammo that spawns there. So they pick up the gun, and then they have to wait for that animation, and then they pick up the ammo. It's much more effective to pick up the ammo first than the gun, because the, with the ammo, there's almost no animation. It takes no time at all to complete that really short animation. So you pick up the ammo, pick up the gun, and then as you move on to the next piece of loot you're gonna find, that's when your animation takes place, and you're not stuck standing there looking at ammo, just waiting for you to be able to pick it up. Of course, the one exception to this is if you're in a situation where you're racing an enemy to a gun, yes, you do wanna go for the gun first, because if you pick up the ammo and he picks up the gun, guess who's gonna win that fight? Next up with looting, don't be afraid to pick up any ammo type and all ammo that you find, as long as it's within a reasonable amount of time and everything. I wouldn't go out of your way to constantly find all types of ammo, but if you're looting a body bag, for instance, and you've got the time and you're not in a stressful situation, pick up all the ammo you can possibly carry. The way the ammo reserves work in this is you can carry a certain amount of each type of ammo, but if you completely load up on one type of ammo, it doesn't affect how much of the other types of ammo you can carry. So if you max out on 762, that doesn't affect the amount of 556 you can carry. So you might as well max out every type of ammo possible, even if you don't have a gun that's chambered in that round. You never really know what's going to happen later on in the match. Maybe you run into a lot of sniper ammo at the beginning of the game, but there's no sniper rifle, so you pass it up. What happens when later on you kill a guy that has a sniper rifle, but he has almost no ammo left? You're definitely going to be kicking yourself for not picking that ammo up earlier. Now, one final looting tip that I have for you guys, this has to do with dropping all of the attachments off your gun. First off, if you are going to be dropping your guns and it has attachments on it, and you want to swap to a different weapon, you probably want to take those attachments with you. The most effective way, assuming you have a bunch of attachments on there, is open your inventory, hover your cursor over the gun itself, and hold square. What this will do is it drops the gun, and it also detaches all of the attachments and drops them on the ground. That way, when you pick up your next gun, you're able to immediately just pick up which attachments you want, and they will equip straight onto your gun. This is generally much more effective than going through each individual attachment, taking them off and putting them in your inventory, then dropping the gun, then picking up the other gun, and then equipping those attachments manually in the inventory system. And with that, that's going to wrap it up for today's beginner tips that I have for you for the blackout mode. Now, I'd like to know in the comment section below, what tips do you have that I didn't have on this list that you could give somebody that's new to blackout and looking to improve? I definitely see a lot of opportunity for plenty of other tips, and it's very likely there will be a part two to this video. So if you guys want to see more content like this, let me know by leaving a like down below. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more blackout content like this. I'll talk to you guys next time. Oh.